Hey, Endless Honeymoon Podcast listeners, if you love this show, the best way to support us is to buy some merch. We have a coffee mug, we have an amazing beach towel, and we have some very cute short shorts in many sizes. That's right. So if you want to get yours now and make your butt look like Natasha's butt, go to EndlessHoneymoonPod.com slash shop. Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. I am Moshe Kasher. And my name is Natasha Kasher. Whoa, you changed your name? No, that doesn't sound very good. I was so furious when you refused to change your name. I was like so fucking pissed off. I've never gotten over it. When I was young, I remember my friend Lynn, her mom's, her letters would come as Mrs. Richard Berman. Right. That was like a thing. I have a Where fr- you were just the Mrs. of the husband. The good old days, the salad days of <laughs> yore. I have a friend who got married and her husband took her name. And what happened to that couple now? Well, I don't want to say on the off chance that they listen to this podcast. They got divorced. But the real point is, we've gone from Mrs. Richard Berman to actually, I'm going to be Mrs. Uh, uh, Sarah Berman to actually, I'm going to be Mrs. Sarah Stern, my original name, to actually, you know what? You're going to be Mr. Sarah Stern. I like it. That is progress, as they say. Smush the patriarchy, as I always say. Natasha, how are you? Good. I've been away. Uh, I was vacationing with my brother. Oh, yeah. And his wife. Sweet relief. And you know what? I realized um, everything they do from like her, her cle- how she cleans her face to ideas for cleaning to recipes, they learn on TikTok. Are they 12? No, the our podcast producer just said that her whole house looks the way it does because of TikTok. Yeah, but our podcast producer is 12. No, she's not. I specifically requested... Are you not 12? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. She's like at least 28. I thought until this point... You're only 24? You're no, 14? No, she's she's not... I swear to God, you're making a joke that you're 14. I, until this moment, I thought you were like a super wonderkin genius. And now I realize you're just a regular person. The thing is that I'm asking is they get so much from TikTok and it made me think like, wow, I uh, a- am I missing out? Is it too late? For Do you, I have to? For you to get addicted to TikTok? No, not addicted to TikTok. To like, start getting life tips from TikTok? <laughs> should I be getting some tips? You need some more life hacks? I don't know. Am I missing out by not doing TikTok? Here's my feeling. Because my feeling when I go on there is that it's a cesspool hell, hell, like a layer of hell. Well, it's everything. It's just a big slice. It doesn't seem anything good. Slice of the internet. But here's my feeling about life hacks. But I did like her tips. Yes. When you're more than halfway through your life, you no longer need life hacks. Oh, because you're just old. Yeah, you don't need to hack anymore. I Just, see. You got some tips already. Yeah, gro- groove into your TV dinners. You got some tips from your age. Yeah, you got some tips from the decades that you have been tipping around. All right. But I don't know. Maybe TikTok has the secret to some stuff that we... I just feel like it's an endless hedonic treadmill, the internet. Every time there's a new platform, they're like, there's so much for you to gain on the platform. But there's nothing to gain. Isn't life good right now? I don't need to Yeah, go... life is amazing. What a wonderful time in history. I'm having a wonderful time. Life I love is, my life. Life is just really special right now. Do you not feel like you have a good life? You have a great life. You got a TV show coming out on I Tithus. have a great life. Yes, you do. That is a great point. Now, what? Do you want to... I have a, some other slices of the internet that have okay. provided us with some good stuff. Okay. The people have spoken, the listeners of the Endless Honeymoon podcast, there is an answer for why that girl has been been having belly button nuts. I mean, the fact that you think life is difficult and we have a podcast where we discovered belly button nuts, it just makes me think your priorities are screwed up. We found out that you can blast from the button and there's a medical term for it. What? It's called, hold on. Uh, it's all over the internet. It's on Reddit. It's on Quora, which is Reddit for uh, old people. Oh my people God, that I love smart. Quora. <laughs> Do you like Quora? No. I actually, my skincare regimen comes from Quora. But um, this, okay, this is one of the, the, the topics of conversation here on Quora is, why is it that when I touch the insides of my belly button, I get a weird, uncomfortable feeling in my privates? And Dr. Kishan Sai Duvada 
says that the before birth, the umbilical cord is the only connection between mother and he says so-called belly button, which is a little snide actually, the so-called belly button the, is the only connection between mother and baby for its food, blood supply, excretion, etc. The umbilicus is connected to your bladder before birth, which is called the urachus. It becomes vestigial after birth. The tissue helps in forming the bladder walls in adults feeding directly into the prostate. This is also known as the G-spot area in females. There is a great amount of nervous intervention to this area, which indirectly connects to the umbilicus and makes your weird sensation when you tickle or put a finger in your belly button. Well, well, well. Then, But here's the thing, honey. I have that too. Oh, well, A little bit of a weird sensation. That girl is like coming well, wait, from her belly button. There's more. There's another topic here on Quora that says, why do I get shivers and an erection anytime I touch my belly button and a brain shattering orgasm if I poke my finger in all the way? Well, well, well. How about that? That's cool. If that lady is listening, know that you are not alone. And here on Reddit, a great place where I get a lot of my uh, political views from on r slash the Don or r slash the Donald. Um, is that his, is that his Reddit? That's the Reddit where the people gather to discuss our leader. R slash the Don. He's not our leader. He's our leader. He might not be your leader, but he's our leader. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. It says here, I can feel it in my vagina when I poke my belly button. I mean, this is apparently it's common, right? And so, I mean, I guess it just happens. It people people have this. They got the the button blasts. Wouldn't that be cool? If you could just poke your belly button and nut. Um, I'd rather just touch my vagina. You touch your vagina <laughs> when you need an orgasm. If I'm going to ha if I'm going to masturbate, I'd rather. You know, I guess I would rather not involve my belly button. <laughs> Your point is well made. I just feel like it could be a very subtle way to get blast one out. If you were nervous at a business meeting. Right. But you're you're like a horny man. This, I'm like a practical woman. Somebody here says you probably have an umbilical hernia. Talk to your doctor. Interesting. I don't know if it's a hernia, but there's, you want to hear some more comments here? Sure, give me, hit me with two more. A buddy of mine, when he poked his belly button too hard, it felt like he was kicked in the balls. He got in a lot of fights as a kid and taking a shot to the gut always dropped him instantly. Well, how about that? The belly button is connected in many ways to our genitalia. I, I just think that this is, this is fascinating. Well, uh, I'm very impressed. Yeah. And uh, did this, was that something that, that was on our secrets? Yeah, that was one of our secrets. Oh. Why? Did you want to hear some more secrets? Let's hear a secret. Hey, Natasha. Hey, Moshe. Um, this is a secret for your secret hotline. Um, when I was little, I loved dry pretzels, like just the chippy kind of dry pretzels. Uh, I still really like them, even though it seems that most adults hate them. Um, but anyway, I used to have like the rounded ones, and I would chew up like a lot of them in my mouth at once, like totally eviscerate them um and i would like keep them in my mouth but then once i had like a big enough ball of chewed up pretzel i would um spit it back out onto another round pretzel oh. like a topping um <laughs> and then i would eat that like eat the round pretzels with the chewed up pretzels on top and like squish it down with orange juice yeah. and it's like the best flavor combo that I think I had as a youth uh, ever. Um, I was a really picky eater. So yeah, this is like, pretty disgusting. But I think about it a lot when people hate on pretzels. So thanks guys. Love the podcast. I She's like, I was a really picky eater. I could only eat pretzels with saliva with as a pre topping on another pretzel. Yeah, I could only eat pretzel pate that I self masticated. <laughs> I uh, at the beginning of her secret she said I really like dry pretzels and I thought to myself or there's no such thing as anything but a dry pretzel. Well, but and you then, know, you could have like a super flavored pretzel, maybe. Maybe that's what she meant. Okay. Well, I, I, cause I, I actually <laughs> was relating to this. 
Well, but, Until she said she like spit it up. Well, what I was going to say was um, that I was like, are there, there are only dry pretzels. <laughs> but then I realized this woman invented the wet pretzel <laughs> right. by self chewing it and turning it into pretzel paste. I used to like those Bavarian pretzels, those big, like, kind of, like, uh, they were very, very dry, actually. They're quite dry. And uh, I was with her until... Until she... Until it took a turn. Until she did the, t- the pretzel paste. Actually, the truth is she should start, start marketing this product, uh, create the pretzel paste. And she could hand, she could hand, hand squirt it into uh, used toothpaste holders. And she could sell it on the black market. Now, if you saw our daughter doing that, what would you say? I would say that's fucking disgusting. Stop it. You'd say don't do that. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. What would you say? Well, you're very into table manners. So sometimes like if she's being quiet doing something, I'll just let it happen. That goes a little bit beyond table manners. You're right. It's not just she used the, the, the crab tong when she was supposed to use the salad fork. It's that she's masticating dry pretzels, turning them into pretzel hummus splurshing it onto a Ew. pretzel round and then eating it again that's to, fucking gross i would probably tell her you'll never have friends if you do that <laughs> that's I, what you'd tell the kid probably that's what i would say not if anyone no one ever sees it i mean that's just not a way didn't you say our daughter spit penne through a, didn't she spit spaghetti sauce on your shirt yesterday through oh, yeah. a penne a penne um round a penne noodle, noodle a penne noodle yeah she thought it was funny t- to like it was like a sp- a spit ball that she was like she thought it was really funny and i don't know if you know this but i like my clothes and so i was very upset i mean i was really upset i didn't know what to do you weren't around it's hard when you were up with the influencers that are your brother and sister-in-law i gotta say though you're so right when when there's another parent there like today she was, I was t- putting her to bed and she like moved her. She was like jerking around and then she like, b- like hit her head on my lip and it was bleeding. And I just said, Moshe, you come put her to bed. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have anyone else to do that. Then there's no one to do it with. You I just went got in. a deal. I went in tonight and I started talking to her. I said, you know. Um, I don't I, like bleeding. I, I know th- that you did that by accident. Is it on accident or by accident? I truly don't know. <laughs> Dry cough. You got COVID when you were away. <laughs> and um she was like yeah i i know and i was like uh i was like i know it was an accident but you know were you not really paying attention to the way you moved your body she's like yeah and i was like were you like kind of bucking around she's like yeah and i go that happens a lot when you're with mom you know and it, it doesn't happen with the two of us why do you think that is and she stopped and she thought for a second i thought i really made a connection with her she needed to be careful the way she moved her body she goes i think maybe it's because we're related <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, you're related to your mom as well, actually, in in much the same way you're related to me. Well, it's one of those moments where I was like, really grateful that you took over in that moment. Well, I'm always here for you. And I was definitely exaggerating how much it hurt. I uh, mean, there was blood, but I like I feel like I might have made her think there was more blood than there was. Mm-hmm. You did say I was so angry. you were screaming from the other room. I'm a bloody mess. Oh, no, but oh, I said, oh, there's nothing but blood. Daddy's going to put you to bed. I'm bleeding. I'm a bloody mess. Oh, no, I just wanted her to know that I was bleeding. Blood puddle, blood puddle, two bunch palms. That's what you said in the other room. Why did you say it like that? And you were screaming. You were screaming. I am blood. Blood has become me. I wasn't doing that. Okay, you can say that to the podcast, but I know I, I know what I heard. But I do feel like it happens a lot. That she bucks you in the head? Yeah. She headbutts you a lot. And uh, do you think it's possible she thinks you're kind of like a little bitch? <laughs> like she kind of is punking you. You know what I mean? Like prison style. All right, let's hear another secret. I'm asking a serious question. Yes, I think she might think that she's bucking me prison style. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. All right, yeah, we can do one. Hey, Tosh. Hey, Mosh. So I have a secret. So I actually used to work for Amazon. Um, I used to work from home. I was a customer service agent. So um, towards the end of my employment there, I was sick and tired of working for Amazon. It was horrible. The pay was low. I was terrible. I was just not happy at the job. So <clears throat> I found out that I could actually log into my own account from, on Amazon and, and actually be able to refund things that I have bought. 
So I went on a crazy shopping spree, crazy shopping spree, but everything that I needed to get, I had just moved into a new house. I went into my account and I refunded every single thing that I had bought to myself. This was towards the end of my employment already, so I didn't care. I knew I was leaving. Um, then I told my friends, hey, you know, if you guys order all these things, give me your order number, give me your information, I'll go in myself, and I'll refund it for you guys. So for two weeks, my last two weeks there, all my friends were buying a bunch of stuff. I was buying a bunch of stuff, and I was just refunding every single thing that we bought. Because one, fuck Amazon, and two, fuck capitalism. Thank you. Bye. Okay. You know what? I find that so offensive. The, the last two things that that guy said I found so offensive. First of all, fuck Amazon. How dare you? Je I mean, Jeff Bezos, I would call a national treasure, a hero. I, it, and fuck capitalism? Excuse me? Uh, not on this podcast. Well, this cat podcast is brought to you by Chewy Toothpaste. Okay? We've got advertisers, buddy. So here's what I recommend that you do. You need to write Jeff Bezos a personal apology and you give him back every red cent that you stole from him because that man, that man does what he does for us. This is such a hard situation because clearly Jeff Bezos is evil. Clearly he takes advantage of his workers. He could be paying them more. So in a way you're like, oh, and he's making this huge mess here on earth and now he like wants to go to Mars or whatever. You know, these guys are like a joke. Well, that speaking, that, I, I hate the idea of it. That said, we might at some point be pitching a show to Amazon. So we actually, and they were, oh, at, can you delete this? They were a previous <laughs> advertiser here on the podcast. <laughs> so I actually want to just say that um, the Amazon, it's a complicated thing. And ca there are no I ethical choices capitalism, over capitalism. And I'm not a, I, I'm not like a businessman. So I guess I don't understand that the bottom line is always money because the bottom line in my life is not money. So I guess I don't quite understand that we're, we're, um we're, i'm not evil so it's like it's a little hard for me to figure it out we're sorry uncle jeff and we just want to say <laughs> honestly as prime members and this is the real reality jeff if you're listening like we are prime members and have been for for years now um and we order a lot of different stuff on prime prime is a great don't get me wrong the convenience is staggering it's next level it's game changing it's it's an amazing thing. However, like, you know, the idea that you don't give people bathroom breaks and you're not paying minimum wage and or a living wage and a lot of the people who are the pickers or whatever they call them are, are can't even afford a home. And, you know, when you when you have, you know, you just I, I think the, the real argument is, is it ethical to be a billionaire? From my perspective, the real argument is um, I probably will do another stand-up special at some point in the next couple of years and amazon if you're a viable buyer uh i don't really stand with what natasha's saying or they with have what, great shows what our caller is saying honestly for me jeff and company um i think you guys are pretty chill and Ooh, cool i have something to say to jeff bezos if, so if someone takes this and you, like by the way you know he listens right <laughs> he does <laughs> Here's what all these b billionaires have to do. It's so obvious. Okay. You take a big ass chunk of your money uh -huh. and you dedicate it to something that you like call your name. Like Jeff Bezos brings basketball to every sing whatever he's passionate about. Bezos ball. To to every Every public school in America, he's going to fund this thing. And then every gymnasium is called the Bezos Gymnasium. He's and doing then these that. People, you don't think he's doing that? He's doing that. No. And then these people can be, or like, you know, whatever is your passion. If you want to be, you know, it could be like the, uh, I don't know, the George Clooney school lunch program. Wait, and George then, Clooney? No, <laughs> why is George Clooney I'm just involved? saying like any he's celebrity who has like so much money they don't know what to do with. They could start like call like they could be in charge of something. Wait, Clooney is a humanitarian, Homeless, isn't he? Uh, okay, well he's he's uh, any so the Justin Timberlake you know dentist for homeless program, <laughs> and then he could like. <laughs> 
<laughs> he could just be like, oh yeah, Justin <laughs> Timberlake. He Wait. like fixed homeless uh, every homeless person's teeth. Wait a minute. You think that your pictures of Justin Timberlake <laughs> rehabilitate his image with the public by I, doing I'm dentistry just saying, for the anyone homeless? Anyone who has like more than a hundred million dollars, but t- particularly the billionaires. You're like, be you in know, charge of something specific the big and just three, take care of it. The big three evil capitalist <laughs> overlords. Jeff Bezos, George Clooney, and Justin no, Timberlake. No, I w- that was like a bad example. I, I Great was just, example. I was just thinking of like, I always thought this with celebrities, but now that there's so many billionaires and capitalist billionaires, they could just like, I'm saying they could they could eradicate a problem and put their name on it. They could eradicate the, a problem like um, cavities in with the homeless or basketball. Who's that guy? Lack of access to basketball. Who's that guy who made the car that you love that's like driving an iPhone? What's that guy's name who wants to go to Mars so bad? Elon Musk. That guy. Yeah. He should have like, you know, the Elon Musk uh, shelter for... They do all of this. You know that, right? They all do No, this. but he could make it... They could make it more of a public thing. What they really should do and is... And just eradicate something. What they really should do is band together. And I... Okay, here's my idea. And you, you might think this a little radical. But I'm going to say go beyond um, helping the, the homeless with their uh, root canals. <laughs> Take it all the way to eradicating homelessness altogether. Like, I honestly, you're obviously, you're making a good point. I honestly don't understand why Silicon Valley billionaires don't all band together and literally... Stop tent cities. Stop ho- unhoused tent cities in What's America. What's that guy's name again? Elon Musk. Elon, the Elon Musk... Stop uh, tent city stop tenement in, village. In uh in in what is it called? Uh, the on ramp. Stop on ramp cities in all of America. So wait, are you uh, uh, on quick question? On ramp tent. Do cities. you work in advertising? Because your copy <laughs> is unbelievable. It rolls off the tongue. I'm just saying. The Elon Musk. <laughs> the Elon Musk stop tent cities on on ramps program in America today. But how cool would it be if you were like, you know what? I'm just gonna give two billion dollars towards this and you know what i took care of it i got rid of it musk and they can have all that because they want glory isn't their bottom line money and glory jeff musk uh cook tim cook if you're listening the tim cook uh theater program here we go for all uh underprivileged youth without cavities (laughs) You, you honestly, this is like an episode of Mad Men. I can't believe I'm seeing you riff like this. Dude, I, 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 I'm just saying, I, I just thought of this. It's brilliant. I it, just think it, it I'm does just need saying to be people... smoothed out a little, but it's brilliant. <laughs> people could like get the glory is all yeah, I'm saying. I think you're right. Well, Tosh, I have to get back to uh, the Holocaust documentary I was watching. <laughs> so maybe we'll cut it there. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll see you on TikTok, I guess. Yeah, I know. Someone has my name. Hey, we were on TikTok, actually. Wait, my TikTok is taken. If some anyone knows if I started a TikTok, who is at Natasha Legero? Someone because, took your TikTok? Yes, and I can't be the real Natasha Legero, so... Why? Is that just too corny for you? I mean, I'm just not interested. How about Del Real? That would be cool. Da R-E-E-L. Uh, if you'd like to be on the podcast, uh, you can email at us at endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail.com. Or give us a call at 213-222-8608. Leave a deep, dark secret. Ask, uh, Tell us some advice that you want. Whatever you want. Find us on Instagram. Apple.co slash endlesshoneymoon is where you can find us or wherever you get your podcast. And we're on YouTube. Subscribe. Do it indeed. Goodbye. Oh, and Natasha, before I go. Yeah? Love you. I love you too.